What have we here? This is too good not to share with you guys. What's going on? What do you got there? This is a Cannondale 2003. Never been started, never been run, never been... Uh, Can you roll it into the before. showroom there and put it on that, on that stand? We put tape on it just to make sure that the little knobs on the tire would stay intact. The little nubs on the tire are protected. This is a brand protected. new... What year is it again? So I think it's a 2003 Cannondale. 2003. Uh, this is a limited production model. I think they made it for like one or two years. They and, and they one or two that... Uh, it has uh, fuel injection on here. It's got the uh, air cleaner right here in the front. It's uh, got a cassette type of uh, transmission so you can take it right out. Ironically, um, this bike uh, um, set the standard uh, for the latest and greatest technology that Yamaha stole from them. This is the um, rear exiting exhaust with a front intake so it sucks air in from the nice clean um, front of the bike instead of the back where it's shooting dirt everywhere and it's almost like a ram air effect sucks the air in through the backbone of the frame into the front of the motor and then the exhaust goes out the back which makes perfect sense and uh, everybody thought Cannondale was you know uh, crazier ahead of their time but Yamaha stole their ideal today's 2019 or 20 Yamaha 450 uses the same exact design and this is by Cannondale and look at the componentry this, this bike almost put Cannondale out of business. They invested, so they're a bicycle company. They invested so much money into research and development and some of the local New England heroes like Keith Johnson race these bikes. Did you know, you know about the history of this thing, Kenny? Or is this uh, before you? Gary was Electric start too, it, right so. up here. Yeah, electric start. So they had electric start, fuel injection, um, and uh, the Ram Air, the, the rear exhaust, aluminum frame, Olin suspension, way before its time, it was a 440 um, when everybody else was uh, doing doing traditional stuff. What else can you tell us about, about this machine here? It's uh, 20 pounds overweight, probably. It was a little uh, heavy? rushed out. I had talked to Keith Johnson about when he raced it, too. Yeah. He said he got a whole shot one time on the uh, national circuit. And then it must be fast. And it is fast when it hooks up, he said. And he said the rest of the time he had to push the bike back to the pits because it never finished a race. Wow. Cannondale rushed it out. If you know the history, Cannondale rushed it out because they were under financial pressure. So if they I can relate. waited a little bit longer, <laughs> uh, they may have uh, actually had something and stayed in business. You know, did, did, did Cannondale... The, uh, the engine was developed brand new from them, too. Did they actually go out of business, the whole company, no, because of this? No, the bicycle's or? still in business, but uh, this ended their motorcycle odyssey, let's put it that way. So they lost a lot of money on it. You know what the coolest part they about this? This bike is brand spanking new. It's never been ridden. It still has the nubs on the tires. never been started. But it has the batteries right down there. The batteries right there. The batteries never been in it. This came from the, the the Ives dynasty of motorcycle dealerships. They owned uh, Chaplin Kawasaki. They owned uh, Bird Ives Honda. They owned a, a bunch of different franchises, and it was a multi generational uh, company. I think two, at least two, maybe three generations were involved. Yeah, Bird Ives was the uh, first owner. I bought my first Honda CR250 in '74 from him. We bought a '78 CR250 from him uh, uh, at their Willamette shop. My brother and I. I actually drove him there in, a, in my car. I was 16, he was 18, and he, um, we left the shop and he rode it down the railroad tracks 15 miles away to our, our house. Well, that was back when you could, now it's all rails and trails. You'd get, you'd, they'd rush you for doing it, but you could ride everywhere. Look how I, slim the frame is that. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's definitely way ahead of its time. Um, and it, the suspension on it is second to none. This is, the suspension on this bike is still good by today's standards. In fact, we put a set of these forks on Kenny's um, 97 CR500 that were, or excuse me, 89 CR500 that were building for him, but um, all aluminum frame. So the Ives family um, had uh, multiple of business franchises in two locations, and uh, they were, I guess, was he ever a Cannondale dealer? I think he must. Have, I don't know on that. I don't know who was a Cannondale dealer. They didn't have a lot of time to uh, set a distribution network up because they really didn't have a lot of motorcycles. This was it. So, they had an enduro bike and they had this, which was basically similar to that. So Ken, Kenny retired and uh, moved down south recently um, and, sold, and uh, closed his franchises. Um, so this was one of the pieces near our neighborhoods or something that you, you were able right, to... I was just right down the store. I saw it on eBay. He was selling it and uh, I said, never had one of these. And How can was, you go wrong? How can you go wrong? Uh, the suspension alone is, is probably worth close to what you paid for it if you had to buy it new. Absolutely. And so, for the time, it was the, one of the tops of its time on the suspension was. So I'm torn. Do we leave the, um, I kind of like the tape, the look on it, because it tells a story. Do we leave the dust on it? 
because you know the whole patina thing of uh, 16 years has never been never even been washed in 16 years. Yeah, it's just sat in in the uh, in the storage facility. So very cool story. It yep. will clean up like a new penny. Um, we'll, oh, yeah. I think we should sleep on it for a couple of days, yeah. but yeah. I'll have my detail shop will shine it up for you if you want to yeah. uh, do that. That would be great. Um, and they can it, come down here and look at it. Absolutely. This will be on display at the New England Motorcycle Museum here. Come check it out. We're open every day except for Christmas. Uh, I see you got another cream puff on the trailer there. What's that? That's the bike I actually race now. It's a 74 CR250. Wow. Elsinore. Wow. Frame has been cut. Okay. Transmission was shimmed. The engine was ported by Eric Gore. Wow, it's, got, uh, it's a ripper then. Suspension on the back. Yeah. So cool. when you say you race it, are you doing AHMRA racing I with it? I raced uh, Arma. I was doing the national series this year. How did you do? South Carolina. Uh, the bike, the older it gets, the less reliable it gets too. So I've had some problems just keeping on the Elect track. Electrics and stuff, or? But I did win Unadilla, so that. Wow, was, uh, you won Unadilla on that? Yeah. You must yeah. be a good rider. <laughs> What class are you racing in? 60 plus expert. I started racing in 74. There's some so fast old dudes the out there. This first bike that I had to uh, race, so I'm still racing. Were, were you an NESC guy also? NESC, yeah, back in the day. So. Oh, you need to come to the Racers Reunion here on the 23rd of November. We had Jojo Keller and John Dowd, Doug Henry, all, they were all here. Oh, yeah. All what, what's your last name again? Fetzer. I raced in my cousin. Fred How do you spell it? F-E-T-Z-E-R. What was your NESC number? I think it was 48. 48? I, I rode, yeah. uh, last year I rode was 1977. I had the uh, Black Widow, the infamous Black Widow Can-Am. Oh, that, awesome. Uh, killed my career. Well, that right was there. kind of like the Jimmy Ellis uh, era back then, that wasn't it? was like the Jimmy Ellis refused to ride. It was so bad. Well, what was, what was, that, was that a, a total change to the lay-down shocks and everything? Yeah, the lay-down shocks, it was really light. The engine was phenomenal on the thing, but it just wouldn't handle. And uh, it would go in a straight line, and that's about it, too. And the rear swing arm flexed a lot. So uh, it, it killed a lot of motocross careers, too. That's a sad story. We, we actually are restoring the previous generation, a uh, 73, I think, or 74, CR, uh, KDM 125 and 250 that were the first ones to come in the country, serial number 6 and 8. They're in our restoration right. shop now. Those, those were fast as hell. Those yeah. are rotary induction motors. And, and I've been racing. I've got a 77 uh, Harley MX that I've been racing. The last oh, you know what? Years. I've seen you down at Central. Were you there yeah. this weekend? Uh, I was there, but I wasn't racing. There was another guy. That did was did you bring your Harley to Central a couple years ago? A couple years ago, yeah. I yep. did too. But does I race it more. Now I'm restoring it, but I race it more than anything. There's a dude with real long hair that had one yeah, too. Yeah, white hair. Yeah. Yep. He bought it from a friend of his who was dying from cancer. That and, was a cool uh, piece. Yeah, it's a really nice piece too. But the Harley's a fun bike to well, ride. Let's wheel this in and put it up on the stand there. And uh, so, have you ever been tempted to uh, put some fresh gas in this thing and fire it up? No, I never wanted to actually. It was too nice. Too nice, and just had no inclination to do that. We actually have one one other. One, yeah, I see it is heavy, isn't it? We have one other um, brand new machine in our fleet here uh, a similar story to this but that one's a Botaco Matador 76 it's never had gas in it wow um, that yeah, one will be in the trunk. a lot of people are just putting these things in their uh, living rooms now. oh yeah it's it. as a piece of modern art you know really you would think a Cannondale executive or somebody would, would uh, involved in, in the industry yeah. would want this maybe Olin's yeah. or something uh, we certainly want it here at the museum so hopefully it'll stay here for a while yeah I think it's uh, a great place for if, if, if you're watching, if you're out there, and if you have a bike you want to display in the museum, just give us a call, 860-454-7024. We have two football field-long rooms in the museum. We're opening a third one right now on the first floor. That'll be an a, um, awesome addition to the museum. That should be open in the spring. So we're looking for more bikes, and this is a great addition. The third floor of the museum is all the racing bikes. This will go on display with the racing machines. Um, very significant piece of moto history here for sure. Thank you for bringing the bike out. Let's go. What are we going to do with your Elsinore? Is that coming in here too? That's going to the mechanic now. Going to the mechanic. Oh, I, I, get tuned up in the winter and uh, awesome. start the new season back in the spring. Awesome. Well, thank you for bringing your bike here. A uh, real pleasure to have it. It's and, nice to be able to display it here where other people can look at it too. Oh, yeah. It'll get thousands of, of uh, people will see this over the course of the winter for sure. So thanks again. So we also had this Ninja 600R show up. What year is this one? It's an 86. This refreshed by my buddy Steve. He's got new tires, stainless, stainless, stainless braided brake lines, new brakes. Um, she's going to get a little bit of love by the What, what year is it? It's a 1986 model. 1986, yeah. Yep. 600, yep. huh? Looks like it went right through it. Tires, changes, brackets, everything's fresh on it. That's right. That's right. 
You still got the salpa dirt on your 500. You should probably yeah. wash this thing, huh? Mine too. Mine's a little crusty. No press. No press. No press. Yeah, it's not ready. Don't look at not it. Not ready don't for prime time. It. Don't 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 even don't even gaze at it. Stay tuned, folks. Lots of great things going on at the museum. Yep. Today we got Marcel and Scott coming with. Some oh man, they're coming back. Enduros. Wow, awesome. And uh, and then we have Rick Smith coming from Ohio with some with some Honda trikes. Stay so tuned. Really Truckloads of bikes coming. God bless America.